to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Please make up your mind for the body of Christ and for yourself that from today, you will never be embarrassed to directly acknowledge God in all your ways. I'm sharing with you a principle that will bless you. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Right? Proverbs chapter 3, when you read from verse 5 to 6, to 7, really, that's verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and there is a promise He will direct, make straight your path. My ministry, my business, my intelligence many guys are around me even them they know that i'm fine continue instead of you to use the opportunity and say lord thank you there are many ladies nobody will even say good morning to see let me tell you men can deceive you but when you deceive yourself you are really in deception everybody here we know where god brought us from everybody knows i know where god brought me from so i'm not going to allow all of the blessings from ministry get me carried away some of us will not acknowledge it by ourselves but if others try to do it in a way you know is destructive you will enjoy it it's like saying i won't buy beer with my own money but if sam buys for me i won't mind you are still a drunkard because a drunkard is not the one who buys beer by himself is the one who drinks it whether it was given as a gift or bought with your money an arrogant person right a boastful person the one that will face destruction from god is the one who always looks for an opportunity for vain glory i'm not saying don't honor people don't acknowledge people i know you love me you respect me you honor me i love you and i honor you too however there is a limit and it is the responsibility of everybody to draw the line there are things people do for me i say no no this is too much And I will build my church. If you allow me build it, the gates of hell will not prevail. Say amen. amen. Number three. Is God blessing us? Please pray in one minute before we continue and say, Lord, build my life. I've been trying to do this thing in my own strength. Please pray. Trying to enter a relationship by your own strength. You tried makeup, it didn't work. You tried with one, it didn't work. You tried buying designers, it didn't work. Because it doesn't work by all those things. It takes the mercy of God. Open your mouth and pray. I've tried it by my strength. I've tried succeeding. I've stretched my intellect from border to border tonight. I give it up. I give it up. Please pray. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Lord, if you do not help me, nobody can help me. If you don't take me from where I am to the place of destiny, there is no possibility outside of you. Can you pray? In all your ways, acknowledge you. Hallelujah. Please listen. Let it be a culture in your life. Every time men begin to clap, become an usher point them to jesus hallelujah and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men you never see me say i did this the power of my might i, I did this do you know every time we finish koinonia when i go back home many times after counseling people I just I have one small chair it's my little altar with God I just get down on my knees sometimes 
when I come, especially during the miracle service, mighty things that God has done, you know, that's how I can just, sometimes I can, I can stay in that position and that's how I pass the night, just acknowledging him. I don't cry before people, but I cry before God. I just sit down and I see his faithfulness. When we had 25,000 likes on Facebook, exactly 25,000, I was on my knees before God and I said, Lord, I know people with TV ministries whose Facebook page is not even up to 3,000. It's the faithfulness of God. I said, Lord, to be able to influence people, I hear that already, this is just like the second service. There are over 1,000 plus people following us on Facebook already. I mean, on um, our online radio. Right now, connected, listening to me from around the world. During my birthday last year, there were about 16 nations. 16 nations called. To say happy birthday i've not gone to those almost all of those nations maybe but the faithfulness of god if you learn to acknowledge god some of you if god gives you half of the anointing he has given me your knee will never touch the ground again because of arrogance the knees that used to touch the ground this was how i used to cry in his presence in the night on concrete floor people are sleeping and i'm crying and say god please if you ever will need to use a man i'm available then i could not afford suit now that i can afford it that suit must rub the ground except it's not my own if it tears let it tear be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high Believe for your glory be lifted high in my life. Believe it, believe for your glory. of your money you you that's the day you will know you don't fear god because prosperity gives you options can you stand and look at 100 million 1 billion and hold it and say lord this will not take my place in god's place in my life oh god bless me for where you began to love god the day one guy said i love you by yourself you have not prayed since that day till today no need for prayer again the day someone said, ah, you are pretty. The day they said, lead one small prayer. And two people fell under the anointing. God never saw you again. Ah. This is how people cheat themselves out of the realm of the spirit. They cheat themselves out of the place of power. I tell you, this is why the body of Christ may never come into unity. Because of this spirit of pride. I did this. I built the church. I did this. It was by my wisdom. I prophesied and it happened. I spoke to her and she came with triplets. The Bible says a man can have nothing except it be given to him by the Father. This was the secret of David. David knew the hand of God. He would say, many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that say, where is his God? He said, but thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. That I have not fallen is not a product of my strength. Oh, I'm this. I don't like ladies. Keep quiet and give God all the praise. I'm anointed. 
I finished three days dry. Come and see what God did in the meeting. Who told you? Who told you? He does these things that men may fear him. Let me tell you something. I show you a secret that will make God foul to keep lifting you. Men may talk. They, their talk will, they, their saliva will dry from their mouth. But you will just be rising by a mystery no human can explain. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Higher and higher, Lord. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. This is already a message to somebody this may be the missing key behind your glory that just faded from last year you found out that it was like Ichabod there are people like that I watch preachers on TV and without a sense of cynicism I see the fading of the glory people are still celebrating but those who are in the spirit know there is nothing new in this grace it's dry money is still coming but it's dry I tell you I've had ministers that I respect so much. I've had ministers that I acknowledge the dealings of God in their life. Speaking recent times and I was shocked. How can a man touch a level of spiritual reality and not have anything else to tell the body? There are people who have been etched out of the program of God because of this pride. There are musicians who have left the scene of Nigerian gospel music never to come back again. Because right now if you don't give them 1.5 they will not come. You have to talk to multiple PAs. They've forgotten that it was one song they didn't even write. He came that day, they didn't eat. And they were praying. And God said, let me bless you. And he brought one song that opened them up. And from that day, have you noticed that most of these people, any other song they write, no matter what they do, it will never sell again. Because it was never about the song. It was about the grace. There are some of us here, please hear me, I'm speaking to you. I know pastors who anything they did used to work no matter how small it was like a charm they can organize a program in 24 hours but right now whether you put balloon whether you fly around the plane nothing happens because he cabot the glorious departed I tell you something the sin of pride is worse is worse than the sin of drunkenness and all of these other things when God will lift a man and you now stand and forget the God of your salvation I spoke to a, a man of God one day I used to know that man very interesting then God had not done anything much in his life but I spoke to him recently and his arrogance oozed out like an odor I could literally smell it with my physical nose I was talking to him before There are pastors who until you now have a seat they forgot how god took them you want to see joshua selman stand here with your fifty thousand or your hundred thousand not that god led you to honor not that they challenged you in church to sow they now stand as you are dropping it in the basket then you see the man of god ah, quarter for me to do that may god take my life for what be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high, be lifted high, be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have to hurry up. I already sense the presence of God. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third thing that we need to understand listen for the body of christ to attain the unity of faith 
is to separate between doctrines and personal dealings with the spirit please listen what i'm telling you tonight is very deep pay attention there is a difference listen between your personal path of spiritual progress as earmarked by god on the strength of what he's making you become are we together now we all start our journey into the things of the spirit together but as we proceed the election of grace diverges men into different trajectories in the spirit are we together now and so if both of us start together and you are called into the prophetic ministry i'm called into the apostolic ministry you are called into business somewhere along the line there will be a divergence the same way students start course science whether engineering medicine you do the same thing are we together as you progress what happens you now begin to move to different programs that are custom built to produce that thought that knowledge in you now the trouble is this most people especially preachers have not been able to draw the line between their personal dealings with god and some of the ordinances and the covenants that they are compelled to make to strengthen their personal work with god so that they can be effective in dispensing the dimension of god committed to them they they do not draw that line and everything their personal dealing in the spirit they ship it to the altar and teach it as a doctrine are we together now listen paul said all things are lawful but not all things are expedient are we together now did you know that god can come my dear god can look at this lady and in his personal dealing with her because she's on her way to become the wife of a man of god and a man of influence are we together now god can tell her my personal dealing with you you are not going to wear trousers are we together now that is not about wrong or right you are occupying a position where you will be a mother to many and i need you to be as modest as possible so that you can give the clearest picture of a virtuous woman that is a personalized dealing but by the time you now ship your personal experience and use it as a template to define virtue you bring error in the body of christ are we together now there are personal things god can give a man are we together now stringent rules that god has given people it has nothing to do with old and new covenant it is your personal work with god god can be so meticulous as to define for you the kind of clothes to wear because of an assignment god can be so meticulous to define to you the kind of the number of children to have god can say because of the enormity of this assignment you cannot have more than two children if you like have eight but at my recommendation for efficiency is two it's left for you to sacrifice your personal ambition of wanting 10 children to say lord for your glory if you are lonely after two you buy a puppy but anything outside that you position yourself are we together god can say because of where i'm lifting you you cannot have three cars at any given point people who sow 20 cars find the best three and give the rest out and people they don't know these are ordinances that control power in the spirit it's not something there are things that god has given me like personal rules it's in the bible samson was given a code they said samson the secret of your anointing is tied to your hair you are a nazarene separate unto god let no razor touch your head you can shave but not bad and delilah came he tried to do every kind of thing and she went to his hair barbed the hair and barbed the glory away from his life until he died are we together now listen most when i see the way many ministers are careless i'm surprised because you see increase in ministry can make you forget the precepts and the ordinances of god that were given to you there are agreements that i had with god i've done all kinds of crazy things there was a time the lord gave me an instruction i put 
hundred like one one thousand like hundred thousand on the ground and the lord said i should pray as i'm matching it that's how i kept matching it i was praying in tongues for hours declaring that finances will never have dominion over me will i tell you to do it it is a personalized dealing are we together now please listen this is giving us maturity separate between the ordinances of god given to you in the secret place for the purpose of efficiency and doctrines that are established by the integrity of the world they may not be wrong but god gave you that because of the capacity he has also given you somebody like papa adeboe his covenant with god was that every time somebody before like you worship god you go down Adeboe on his knees his covenant are we together now whether in london before obama like god, papa, before down, anybody he would do this are we together are we together now? whether in long there are people because of their covenant with god they will never own more than two personal houses they will make many rich but they themselves are limited for many years many years i wanted to buy a car god stopped me i don't know how many times there are times i've smiled thinking i just went to god oh god i like this Will I stop you from buying a car? If you want to follow my own path, for you, God didn't direct you. And it took. <laughs> what is your dealing with God? There is no man of the secret place who will not eventually have personalized dealings with God, where unique ordinances will be given to you from God. Hmm. It was William Branham. That was given a sign by the lord that every time his right hand begins to shake the angel of the lord that accompanies his ministry is in the place and he will stand for hours and people are watching him and he says he's waiting for the arrival of the angel and people are angry which angel we've been here and then his hands begin to shake and he says the angel is here and you begin to see dramatic things you try it you don't know whether it's demonic or you see how spirits get into people because you now begin to see yours and say, ah, William Branham, whereas he's a spirit. God is warning you. The atmosphere of God's glory is causing a spirit to react. Instead of you to cry for help, you are there rejoicing that you are growing. Listen, it is costly and dangerous to take your personal spiritual precepts and bring it as a sign, just like the example I shared. Did you know that there are ladies that God will give them rules? no heavy makeup aside from powder and just something does it stop there he may not necessarily fight it but what he's saying because of what i am making you become can you sacrifice this for me are we together listen if you love the lord there is nothing he will make as a demand from you that will be too much to give him hallelujah it is lack of this separation between personal dealings i've done all kinds of crazy things with god but i cannot bring it as a doctrine i i stopped sharing my experiences the only experience that most people have had is my encounter with jesus there are many more but i will not share it because these are personal dealings and if you are not careful when you begin to share it it will make people to deviate from having confidence in the knowing the word to begin to search for encounters and when the devil sees your appetite for sight in the spirit is the exact raw material he needs to deceive you one day you will see something that will not be of god hallelujah so many altars today many constitutions of churches have the personal geo's encounter as the rule for the church if geo does not eat salt because god suspected that he may have high blood pressure and god before that time you see that just a simple rule now he will now add it if you eat salt in that church you are anti what god is doing that's wrong that's a personal dealing there are people read the bible because of certain kinds of anointings they were forced to be vegetarians so that they can host certain kinds of the anointing but you don't stop somebody from eating 
Jesus, for instance, never ate meat. He only ate fish cereals. It's in the Bible. You never see a record where Jesus ate meat. Who told Paul, kill and eat? Answer me. Who told when when remember those unclean animals? Pig everything when it came down. Ah, Peter said, like Jesus, me too. And Jesus, ah, I had to do you are not going to the cross. I know what I was doing. He said, kill and eat. He didn't say just kill and look at it. Kill and eat. Listen, you can see two people. They will do the same thing. God will keep quiet over somebody. But for the other person, God will say, let's go back to the secret place. And you are saying, God, me again. Everybody is praying for one, one hour. God is letting them. You pray for four hours. God is saying, you are not being serious. And you are like, God, what is this? Watch this. You don't compare your work with God. With what is happening to the other person. There is a template air marked for you based on what God is doing in you and based on where God is taking you to. Separate doctrines. A good pastor will know how to teach people the truth. Void. You may at times initiate your personal experiences to buttress on some points, but the message cannot be hinged upon your personal experiences. Your personal experiences are too mysterious and haphazard. It will take only you to understand them. When you share it with people, it will lead them into confusion. There was a time in my life, for instance, where the Lord asked me not to read my Bible for one week. You see that kind of strange thing? Imagine teaching you now. You say, thank God. I always knew that this my not having appetite to read the Bible is not backsliding. I've been looking for an excuse. Even apostle, don't say that to us. I'm even saying it now, warning you. It was because God, I was in a season of my life where God was teaching me certain things. Are we together now? And God was teaching me that it is more profitable for me to receive the word than just to read it. And the Lord began to tell me that I am ever learning then, but not coming to the knowledge of the truth. I was obsessed with Rema. I would sit down with Dick's Bible and eat it cover to cover. Greek words, check everything. Just look at it. And I knew that something was wrong and the Lord began to speak to me. It's not just about Dick's Bible and Strong's Concordance. Do you believe the little I have given you? Because faithfulness is the key to increase. Not just careless knowledge. And the Lord began to teach me that there are pastors that I'm allowing them to glean along certain paradigms in the spirit. But this is unnecessary for your kind of ministry. So you must stay with me to teach you the diet combination that will produce that apostolic grace in your life. And so because of that, it was an experiment for seven days. But I cannot share that experience and use it as a doctrine. Hallelujah. Is God blessing you? How many people have we confused as pastors with our personal experience? Because the man of God wants two children. Like I said, anybody that has three, four you are eyeing the person in your church five you are looking with anger six you are looking with rebellion why put people under pressure just because there are certain people because of their call they may not marry i hope you know oh yes men and women alike because of the nature at least we saw it with the apostle paul because of the nature and the demands I always imagine if Paul had a wife, he would have been as good as not marrying because the number of times she will see him in her lifetime is countable. Prison today, Ephesus today, Diana will influence somebody to go and you know, all kinds of things. So God knows why he just said, look, Paul, I know I will compensate you when you come to heaven, but for now, forget about the issue of women and pay attention. So if you are not married, does that mean you pressure people and every time somebody says, I want to get married, you there are people like that. Any area that is not a major area of dealing in the spirit, they don't pay attention to people when they are having those issues. They don't deal with them in that area. Personalized dealings. God can give you dealings. Food, clothes, the way to communicate certain things to do and not do it's not just the cause of the law 
it is his unique dealing for you because he has studied your vulnerability and your strength and he has seen that it's only in this kind of atmosphere like a buffer he creates for you so that you are safe and if you walk within the jurisdiction of his description i'm telling you you will never fall praise the lord let's take the last point and then we'll pray is god blessing us today Romans chapter 12 from verse 3. We'll read the A part and establish the last point and then we'll pray. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12 verse 3. For I say through the grace given to me to every man, listen, that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think right but to think soberly according as god has dealt to every man the measure of faith listen the bible says there is a way a man can have a perception of himself that is correct but there is a way a man a church can have a perception of himself herself to a point that the bible calls it more highly that means you have crossed the boundary the acceptable level the last point this one has troubled me personally the inability closely related to the point i just shared the inability to separate between thus saith the lord and our human opinions Please write it down. The inability for ministries, pastors to separate between thus saith the Lord, a prophetic word coming from God and the sincere opinion of a man, a combination of his exposure, his intelligence. Please look up. There are many churches today that even if the man of God coughs, people say, yes, Lord because the man has created an atmosphere i'm not laughing listen please we are, we are going to pray now there are men of god who have created a picture of ministry that everything that comes from them is of god are we together we do not know that the holy spirit is not a fool there are many times paul will speak and say i speak as a man this is my opinion my frank intellectual analysis on this issue because you see we we have transferred this inferiority that came from the continent of africa into our lives and we feel that the only way to respect us is when um we give people an idea that everything that comes out of the man of the, the words of the man of God came directly from God. What has this led in the body? People refusing to marry because a man could not separate his opinion. I can look at a lady, come mama. I can look at mama now. Are we together? And see a very beautiful lady and say, ah mama, this lady is a nice lady. Oh. If you have been praying, I think this, is, this lady is worth praying about. That's a human opinion. He's saying amen. <laughs> I'm busy using him as an example. And you are saying amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Ah, he knows what he's scared in Koinonia to receive. Are we together now? So I am, listen, listen. I'm telling him sincerely. Oh, look at this lady. We have all watched her in Koinonia. She loves God. She's a serious lady. She's serious. If God is sending you to a ministry, this is the kind of person to be a pastor's wife not by any vision by intelligence and sight and logical conclusion based on the principles of the word of god you know a bad woman when you see you don't need a dream you see all the attributes you know an irresponsible man when you see him you don't need any angel to appear and say this guy is not an he's not he doesn't like the things of god you are unequally yoked what you love is what he hates the more you are growing, the more he's angry with your spiritual growth. Is that a good man? What prayer do you need about it? You pack your load and leave. God gave us wisdom. He said wisdom is profitable to direct. 
so back to my example i can now tell mama but if because of my arrogance i now say mama that's your wife wife that's that's your that's your husband are we together now let me tell you what i've done to both of them i have tied them in an unholy i have put a stronghold upon their minds are we together now whereas this guy may be looking at another lady his heart is somewhere he has even started the process laying the foundation and all of this and now i'm coming to scatter the whole building because of a supposed vision another thing is seeing somebody and tell him i'm looking at you and i um go and start trailer business this guy is saying god is sending me to oil and gas he say trailer and because he respects me this guy for 10 years is trying to buy one truck are we together now listen men of god have destroyed the hopes the dreams the lives of people if you need money in your church and a man says i want to build i've gathered six million and you want to say so don't say god is demanding your isaac i'm telling you now my polite proposal is better than an ambrobas gun think about it that's not prophecy that's a threat you are threatening the man to withdraw his six million and deposit it otherwise ambrobas will come and truly if ambrobas come one day you say ah this man is a man of god no he's not a man of god that's not the reason why arm robbers came listen every pastor and man of god here listen we owe god accountability you know years ago i didn't used to know the if the effect of my words on people i used to think when i just speak to people carelessly it won't mean anything to them but as i kept growing in leadership I got to learn that the words of a leader is like the words of a father it makes impact you can look at a lady right now and say i'm proud of you just that little step to you is no big deal but that will be the basis of her seriousness in the spirit ah, ah. joshua selman said he's proud of me ah out of everybody in koinonia because to you is no big deal because you are used to being celebrated to someone who has never received a comment from somebody the same way you look at somebody and say you're a bad girl you were joking and the lady is crying for one week oh god i repent wrong words we have not separated thus saith the lord from our sincere human opinion there are times people have met me over issues and i've told them honestly god has not told me anything about this issue however let's look at it from the bible okay this is what you are doing no the bible prohibits this try this take it this way and then sometimes in the midst of it god will speak expressly and i'll say this is the word of the lord to you and when i think what i said was of god if i later discover that at my level of growth or for whatever reason i didn't hear well i will not have the embarrassment to say sorry i think we should pray about this thing again that day i thought it was god that said you should buy a bicycle but right now i found out that god has no business with you buying any bicycle let's pray do you have the courage brothers and sisters to separate between the word of god spoken to you to people or to yourself and your sincere human opinion please sit down the body of christ has been destroyed because of this a man makes a mistake simply acknowledge it was a mistake you say are you joking even my mistakes are pro no 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 that dimension now is not of god once you get to that point is insecurity spiritualized hallelujah because you see in africa we have a lot of respect for the words of men of god and please listen pastors heads of departments and maybe all the people in our community online don't be under pressure to speak to people if god has not said anything it does not mean you are not anointed hallelujah so we have all kinds of people confused right now how many people have made mistakes in their marriage because it was a man of god that said so you must marry so 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 and so person now he married the lady and he doesn't know what to do with her 
and they are all angry and they are confused and the man of God is there I know men of God who have looked at people and say relocate you shouldn't be doing anything in Nigeria and sincerely he just perceived in his spirit that this guy should be abroad he now said go to Kenya the guy is living like a, a fugitive in Kenya whereas he was living with authority he sold his house sold everything and left could it be that there are people seated here right now and is the supposed word from a man of God that has kept you limited you wanted to do business and the man said you don't have any any business doing any business right and now you've sat down because you thought that oh my own is just ministry that is coming and you are getting poor you are getting broke the day you went to go and meet uh, maybe the lady's parents for introduction they say what are you doing you say according to what my pastor told me you say I should not worry it would be like the twinkling of an eye and the father looks at you and you say you have the courage to come and enter my gate the next time you come I will call police and they will catch you and you go back disappointed oh God did you not speak to me I refuse to be a fool I refuse to let the pursuit of God look like stupidity whenever there is no direct word from the Lord I work with the principles of the word how many men of God were doing well in ministry until a prophet or an apostle somewhere in a meeting prophesied to them I know pastors who have no business having churches they are not supposed to open churches but they went and met a man of God now the man may not be wrong but he spoke a word he said I'm looking at you and I see 17 branches God is giving you speed the guy started dying the money that God allocated for the program he now started spreading 17 branches around and now he's killing him weekly budget 2.5 whereas his annual money that he's receiving from the small members is 500,000 where is he going to get the other money from so he starts lying he starts creating a prophecy session drop your 30,000 I speak to you that's what has led men of God into all of these things because of pressure separate between the word of the Lord directly see and a sincere communication of the truths of the kingdom there are times I prepare a message not that God told me necessarily I sat down as a leader I understand how to build people I know that if you have a ministry with people you must build them in the area of spiritual growth build them in character build them in finances family life leadership interpersonal skills these are things that are we, we are human beings God does not need to tell me that the wisdom of the word has taught me that you must build people holistically there are times I come on stage here and God completely from everything I've planned that does not mean he did not give the inspiration but at this current time this is what he wants to be said and I'm unashamed I drop it there are times I come here and I tell you this is what the Lord spoke to me this word came from God this is what he wants us to do it is not unspiritual to acknowledge your humanity listen to my message why revivals die the humanity of men people have sent me names Dayo uh, Shegu who are who they say apostle who do you think among these three guys I said no 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 God has not told me anything I don't even want to start deceiving you but there are some of us here especially some of us who are just starting in ministry you are under pressure when you get that kind of text you just laugh and do tinini tanana and then it just lands on dial and you send back say dio i hear dio and now the lady and maybe dio is not even born again you now pin this lady with this this unspiritual brother for many years and she cannot move forward i deliver anyone here who has been under the influence of a wrong prophetic word that has tied you down and has refused you from moving forward in the name of the lord jesus christ A man of God who is limited in scope sees somebody who wants to do international business 
and he says no this is not of god he's using his limitation about his poor understanding on financial intelligence and destroying the passion of another person to expand you don't do that and then the worst part is when we start saying it's from god so right now brothers let me just buttress on this point but brothers cannot come and meet a lady you can't come and meet a sincere lady and just tell her oh you love god you have to start saying look it was by 241 between 241 or 242 uh, sorry i was dragging you Abby. around 241 or 242 i was just strolling around somewhere and i saw what looked like a vision i said lord is this you and it was silent now the lady is standing and wondering what's this guy saying now of course she knows where you are going to and he says look on a very good day me I, i'm just minding my business but how can i be negligent of this heavenly call now that i've seen this call and now the lady wants to say no but she has been threatened by what a vision god said you are my wife i'm not saying go and think about it what is the answer the lady said well it's too early i don't know you is this what you are saying me too do i know the vision i i saw it I, ah. As funny as what I'm saying is, this is the template, the only way many brothers in many churches know how to ask a lady. They just come and say, "What did, are you still wasting my time? Or I plan to marry based on what God told me. He showed me July. Are you doing this thing or not? Let's just know. And it keeps backfiring again and again and again. Because you see, the laws of the spirit are unemotional. This again is also the reason why people are confused. And let me just touch on this and then we'll pray. Today, you go to bed and you see Amaka. Bless you, darling. Tomorrow, as soon as you wake up, you see Shalhoma. You are washing your face and you saw her face. I say, I reject it. You saw it again. Are we together now? Next week, you now see Martha. And then the individual, is he sincere? Yes is she sincere yes but because you have tied your your paradigm are we together now to only visions you are confused you saw seven sisters in one week you are not a bad brother but you are seriously confused you can see me come matter you can see me wearing suit and matter dressed like this it can mean intimacy not marriage you have to go back to God to find out what he's saying. That you saw what looked like suits does not mean it's marriage. A ring can be a symbol of authority, not a vow to say I do. You see, you, 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 you come down and then be careful some of these books. Please, um, um, it's my job and my duty to address these things. Although that's really not what I'm talking about. But since it has come, let's just let it land. There are books many of us have read written by sincere people who have been confused. That's why a man can be married and now be looking at a lady and then another prophet will come and say, well, I don't know how to tell you this thing, but this lady you have married, although you are 10 years in marriage, she's the reason why your ministry is not moving forward. I stand as a prophet of God to declare to you, is there a lady called Jane in Koinonia? He said, yes, yes, ma'am, I'm I said, leave your wife, go to jail. Now, the man will not leave her in one day. But automatically, he was not eating her food again. And then he now calls Jane, 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 how now? How was service today? Then he said, fine, daddy. He said, why must you call me daddy? <laughs> it, has, it has started. I will talk, oh, my name is Joshua Selman. <laughs> And the wife is surprised. He's praying. He has suddenly developed an unusual passion for prayer in the night. And you go to the parlor and you see he's, he's secretly calling. Jane, what does it take to do your wedding sharp sharp? And he's planning on leaving his wife. Because somebody said, thus said the Lord. And in the church we are so unspiritual that anybody just stands. And because he tells you something that is true. Then he now uses it to confuse you. Please listen to me. Anyone here who has left his financial pursuit 
because a man of God spoke to you and said you don't need it go back and carry those notebooks and start reading it otherwise you would you would chew your hands in the future to come the Bible says a lazy man will not eat it has nothing to do with with vision are we together now if you graduate and you want to become a millionaire from you've nothing is coming in your hands now get a job and start from there do you need a vision there are two ways God directs men he can say start and he can say stop so if he doesn't say anything start I need to address this thus saith the Lord has destroyed a lot of people so we have gotten into all kinds of things thank you my dear I went to pray for a woman some years ago God is my witness I saw over 21 anointing oils and this 21 anointing oils was from different men of God and different prophets 21 none of them was free by the way not one was free she went to one woman one prophetess I was told that if you go to the woman's place now I'm not criticizing maybe the woman is listening to the message hallelujah and then the woman said you have to camp in her hostel you must buy her water you must eat only from her restaurant who does not know that's business skill no 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 don't threaten me with spirituality who does not know if I have a ministry wouldn't I want you to eat from my restaurant it's a very sincere desire to generate revenue don't spiritualize it and make it look like if you eat my rice there's there's the way that rice this is is it not uncle bears or whatever they brought it they, they cook that rice you spiritualize it and threaten people there are members who cannot go and buy food in certain places because some men of god have supposedly put an embargo Haba. you want to take your children to a good school but the man of god has said if it's not my school except you are not under this ministry and you are threatened i set you free I deliver you from that nonsense this night in the name of Jesus Christ. One of the benefits of spiritual growth is freedom. Marry me or you die. You say, oh, no problem. I'm already dead. You don't threaten me. I marry because of love, not force. If you are in a hurry, go and find somebody and go and meet the parents. We give this terrible idea about God and it is the prophetic and apostolic ministry that has brought this bad idea about God. Everything that a man wants, he uses prophecy to make it happen. The Lord is speaking to me right now. Everybody, package 10, 10,000. Come and drop it. Rub my shoes with it. It's a sign of speed. The speed I've experienced in two years of ministry. Carry that seed. Mr. Man, you need money. No problem. God designed a system to honor you. Don't tell lies and threaten the people. For when God speaks, there is grace for performance. There are many angry people. You see them remove the envelope and they are just walking to the man of God with anger. They get there and they just kneel down and just drop the tear and say, pray for me. There are many members are angry and I foresee a revolt if we don't change. Because as TV ministry is exposing people right now, a day will come koinonia is going on air and more people will hear these truths and when it happens people will say pastor my money because all that long story you have been threatening me i will say it without any fear of favor i'm a man of god there is a way i can come to you right now and tell you i'm hungry please give me food and you will bless me but when I come and say the Lord instructs, even when God commanded Elijah, he didn't go to one and say, God has said it. Did you hear? Bring food. He said, Madam, bring food for me. Thus saith the Lord. People have mortgaged their vehicles. They carried their jeeps and gave a man of God because he said, God said, bring it. God is not an idiot. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times that those kinds of instructions will come. I can't tell you how many times God has made a demand of my resources, demand of any and everything. However, 
anything that is not done by love brothers and sisters is sin don't let any man threaten you to marry him in the name of prophecy don't let any man threaten you the worst one is becoming part of a church because of prophecy so like all these guys now serving the lord the day now they are ready to go and start their ministries or do something the man of god now stands and says if any of you leaves this assembly except i'm not a man of god there is a curse upon you nonsense there's no such thing as that except if they believe it they'll go and die as a result of lack of carelessness and preparation not because of insecurity expressed in a threat are we together now there are so many pastors they can't marry they can't get a job they can't move because they are serving a self-centered man of god who is enjoying their ministry and will never allow them to move the moment they want to move you say the cause remember and they now stay back i deliver you tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ Any man deceive you. listen our god is a good god our god is not a wicked god who comes out to just kill people and destroy their lives men kill themselves because of their violation of kingdom principles we are going to pray Ephesians chapter 4 says it is for this reason he gave unto some when you read from verse 12 apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors teachers he says for the edification the maturing of the saints that's what is happening to you i'm not teaching you this listen please look up to be judgmental and imbalanced because some of you your various churches whether here or at home you have men of god that do some of these things the goal is not to go back with the spirit of arrogance and rebellion but the goal is to have a settled confidence immovable and unshakable to separate between thus saith the lord and anything that is a lie hallelujah but i know whom i have believed he says and i am persuaded that he is able so number one I spoke about the fact that God is always in the church. I'm doing a review. Everyone say God is always in the church. Yes. Regardless of the imperfections, God is always in the church. When you go to church, look for God. Don't look for doctrines. When you go to church, look for God. Don't look for dress code. When you go to church, look for God. Not a man's ability to speak good English or otherwise not a man's ability to gather degrees and then you use that to mean oh this guy knows what he's saying no when you go to church don't go around looking for mundane things go to church looking for the one who is in the middle of the lampstands bypass the mistakes bypass the arrogance bypass the flesh and find God if you search for him you will find him in every church because he's there for the sake of two or three who are gathered in his name the rest may be gathered in another name but when two or three are gathered in his name what did he say will happen he said there i am not by proxy in their midst number two god is the builder of the church and by extension the builder of your life always know that number three separate between your personalized dealings with God and the doctrines that God commits unto you your personal dealings with God may require you following some strict pathways that are for your personal consumption and not for the church not for members generally separate it feed the people with the truth as committed to you unto them and separate between your personal dealings and what god is telling them number four separate between thus saith the lord and your human 
opinions your human opinion can be spiritual and it can also be equivalent to the word of god but have the unashamedness to admit before people especially those who honor you and esteem you to be so anointed have the meekness to tell them this is my perspective on this issue and when god speaks have the unreserved boldness to say this was from god if i perish let me perish please rise up on your feet hallelujah we are going to pray i'd like you to please participate in the prayer i thought i'll have time to round off with psalm 133 a mystery god showed me about the blessing released when the corporate body comes but our time is up but i think we've had enough listen to me jesus said look up everybody and ye shall know the truth he says and the truth shall make you free he says therefore if the son of man sets you free you are free indeed many of us have been saved but we are not free because of these things and we are in our way contributing to destroying the body of christ with these points that i've shared pride claiming everything that is done is from you or criticizing ministries you call a ministry and say this ministry they are not anointed they don't even have rema there's no revelation in this ministry there are books god wants you to read and you feel i've left this man far papa here deboe comes for a crusade and you cannot attend because you think my level of revelation is far exceeding this thing this man is going to be teaching us as if we are in nursery school when you search for god you will find him in every church take my word for it when you search for god the god that i serve he's not just in your church he's not just in koinonia when you search for him you will find him he was found in prisons he was found in different places in the bible I choose to seek God not the perfection of men I choose to seek God not the dexterity of ministries I choose to seek God when I go for a, min a meeting I ignore the mistakes of the man of God I ignore the limitations I see his disalignments here and there but I sustain a spirit of maturity did you know brothers and sisters and I say this with all humility we're praying I've had the privilege to be called by different people and they have spoken to me about men of God and their limitations I think I was sharing with you was it some weeks ago one of them was one very great man of God and you know some people called me to say certain things that I cannot even begin to say here and they were true they were not a lie so when they said all these things to me I had started seeing these signs personally but then when it, it it personally broke me the lady had to do it in secrecy because this is i mean if you count the men of god in this country maybe the first 10 you will be among them repeatedly but i told them something i said listen i'm not justifying the things the man of god is doing but i can tell you authoritatively he's still a man of god whether you choose to disbelieve him or not i will build my church if he refuses to align in the secret place and amend for those imperfections he has god alone to face but as far as the building of the church is concerned christ alone must be glorified do not let the imperfections of churches and men of god stop you from seeing god and receiving there are men of God who are very arrogant but I listen to them passionately because my focus is not their arrogance they should finish their boasting and then let me hear what God has to say and I know they carry something that I need so I ignore all of those things there are men of God who are very careless I ignore their carelessness and I pay attention 
there are men of God who are very vulnerable when you look at them you don't know what they can do but I ignore those things and I pay attention there are men of God who you know are standing very fine between the bridge of witchcraft and ministry I ignore all of those things I have had a passion to find God that's why I find him everywhere it doesn't matter where I look I find him you stop seeking for him and started seeking for perfection in a man of God in koinonia in your ministry you start you stop searching for him and you started seeking for perfection in every book you started seeking for which Greek word is correct or wrong and it stops blessing you oh, oh, oh. and say lord help me that everywhere i go in the body of christ let me search for jesus not perfection lift your voice and pray a seeker of jesus not perfection a seeker of jesus man may be imperfect man may not have the excellence you are looking for they may not have the organization you are looking for but can you find Jesus in your church? Can you find Jesus in your pastor? Can you find Jesus in the church in Zaria? Can you find Jesus in the church in the north? Can you find Jesus in the church in Nigeria? Yes, I know there are manipulations. Yes, I know there are wrong prophecies. I know that there are manifestations here and there of witchcraft. I know there are people whose God is their belly. But can you find Jesus in the church? Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I take away that attitude of cynicism. I take away that attitude of resentment. I take away that attitude of self-centeredness. I search for Jesus in every church. I search for Jesus in the Catholic Church. I search for Jesus in MFM, in living faith, in deeper life. I search for Jesus. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, I relinquish dependence on the flesh and all the things that you have accomplished through me I lift my eyes from today on you alone and I will never lean on my own understanding lift your voice and pray father I repent for making men look at me instead of you I repent for drawing the attention of men to myself instead of you are we praying Pray, Lord, I've not used my beauty to direct men to the king. I've not used my prosperity to direct men to the king. I have a passion for being celebrated to a default, to a point where I don't care if my king is exalted or not. Lift your voice and pray. Let pride die in my life. Let fame glory die in my life. Shabakata prada yada bala yada bala yada bala. Shekata prada yada bala yada bosh. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We'll combine the third and fourth point and pray together. We're going to pray and say, Lord, I pray that all those who believe in your word upon my mouth will not be misled 
by my inability to separate between what you are saying and what I'm suggesting to them. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, in any way I've confused people, bring direction to them. Are we praying in Koinonia? Lord, I pray for the millions that submit to the grace of God upon my life and believe in the word of God upon my mouth. May I never mislead them as a result of my ego. Oh, may I not say God is saying when you are not speaking. May I have the humility to separate between my personal suggestions and the word of the Lord. I receive grace not to put men in bondage. I receive grace not to yoke men. I receive grace to separate my personal feelings from that which you want to tell the body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. We are going to pray. Sorry, there's no time. One of the blessings of the body of Christ is the ability to contact the corporate anointing. Listen, let me tell you something. It's called the power of a corporate life. Let me just share this mystery. Give me one minute. Listen. If there is a dimension that I need to step into a new level of prosperity or grace, but because of my personal dealings with God, I have not yet learned how to align the Holy Spirit so that I can make that possibility at work in life. I can take advantage of a Jimmy's deadness and enter that dimension. Are we together now? The reason why when one person opens it to the body, everybody starts entering. It's called power of a corporate life. It's there. The oil comes the head of Aaron, but does not stop there. Any boy connected to that spiritual tribe, that family, they become a castle of that grace. So all it takes that's the beauty everybody does not have to open every door by themselves so you call the door you have opened from your secret place i come the door i've opened from my secret place in worship there is a meaning i leave that meeting with a grave i never would have anything some of you by watching the worship team something was calling your music ministry you had the grace but you didn't have the ability to write songs but now somebody the grace to write songs started singing and that spirit fell upon you right now there are people who were not songwriters but because they were able to tap into the grace are we together now there are people that revelation and that grace the spirit of prayer and supplication but were able to when you keep for colonia and then you started attending the meetings and then you went to the prayer but something happened to you you contacted the spirit of prayer and supplication now you can run eight hours you're stretching in the spirit seven hours and it's like you just detach in it there is a grace that makes it happen are we together you can begin to from in the night and pray till 12 in the afternoon and it does not tell because the power of the corporate anointing has come up there are people who do not have the appetite for excellence they do not even have the recognition of it but once you come to a mystery all of a sudden as a pastor you start with this in and in Koinonia, nobody said, it's now time for offering. And then people clap. And you say, wow, there can be a way. You are not just seeing. There is a spirit behind it. And that spirit comes upon you. And all of a sudden, you find out that it begins to affect the area of your life. The day you organize a meeting, you will see yourself reproducing Koinonia. That's that you will know how much you have carried the grace. There are some of you here, you are music ministers. The day you go to minister somewhere, you will be shocked. You will think you are in Koinonia. All of a sudden, you will see graces. That's what happened to a lot of pastors. Some of them just visited. They just came and sat down. I didn't even prophesy to them. They just got up and went back to their meetings. And they were surprised. Listen, let me tell you the shocking thing. When they went to their, when they came for Koinonia, their keyboard did not follow them. Are we together? Their leaders did not follow them. But because of the anointing they came with, 
all their leaders started behaving the way the leaders behave in that ministry is an anointing it's called the power of a corporate life you've entered into realms that your personal alignment would not have afforded you to enter on the strength of unity i like us to pray tonight as i just pray for us quickly i like you to say lord every grace that i need but my personal alignment has not been able to bring me into and it's available in this house i open up my spirit to receive it lift your voice and pray 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 you're a prayer warrior but you are poor it means there is a grace there is a grace that is here to come upon your life you are anointed but there are no members there is a grace that you need you are prosperous but you don't pray there is a grace that you need you are anointed but there's no speed in your life oh pray come on what grace is lacking in my life and is available what grace is lacking in my life pray we're rounding up Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll just leave the impartation for next week. Please don't miss next week's meeting. Before I come up, we are going to have a session, like a panel, four people. We are going to be discussing very serious matters of the kingdom. A panel, four people, having some deep questions about our work with the spirit dimensions we we'll touch on four areas spiritual growth finances family life and leadership we're going to touch on these four areas please don't miss it hallelujah we're going to sit down and have people discuss epochal dimensions this is not teaching this is not teaching we're going to give people an opportunity for god to just correct things and after that our minister if i'm to do an impartation now our time will go however please i want you to pray and say father whatever is not working in my life but i have seen another person in koinonia working in it that grace i open up that it must come upon my life right now please pray there are prayer warriors in this place there are millionaires in this place there are exceptional leaders in this place there are men and women of uncommon influence hear me brothers and sisters there is a variety of spiritual graces from different ministries different encounters different perspectives different spiritual paradigms it takes all it takes openness so the assignment for you is in preparation for friday write down listen write down all the areas of your life where you have seen the grace of god work take note of it but write down the areas of your life listen please write down the areas of your life where you have not seen the notable grace of god working come with that list we are going to pray on it on friday i'm not interested in the one that is working are we together that's why you think certain men of god are fake because they are the only ones carrying certain levels of graces and it's not supposed to be if you are a prayer warrior and you are broke it's because there is a grace you have not received are we together if you are a business person who does not pray there is a grace you have ignored so the body of christ gives us an opportunity to step into anointings brothers and sisters you will never prosper in an area where the grace is not available it's not an issue of trying please write it down oh in my finances i'm a millionaire this is already done in my prayer life god is helping me i'm doing very well but in my work life uh -uh, i think there's a problem 
in the area of character i think something is wrong or i i do well but everything i do does not work i try to call people into anything and they don't come there is a grace for influence that you don't have write it down with your heart open we are going to flog it out here on friday open the heavens and let there be transference of graces transference and you will go out there were things in my life years ago were not in my life i know they were not in my life and i knew the day they came there are things right now they are not yet in my life and i'm pursuing them with every every openness of heart and spirit and i know they will come and they will land in my life father i pray tonight you have challenged us over the body of christ to the end that we come to the unity of faith i'm praying for everyone under the sound of my voice lord bring them to strange levels of graces in the name of jesus christ you are doing mighty things in koinonia in this season and lord i thank you for it i'm praying oh god that you will not withhold your hand do mighty things mighty things mighty things in the lives of your people in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now please keep standing there are people here please when i'm making the altar call i want to play with us no movement let us always honor those who need to come and give their lives to christ hallelujah and so time for altar call we should have minimal distractions so that we give the people an opportunity to be born again to be saved listen the foundation of all these things we are talking about if you are not in christ you are not part of the body of christ are we together every part of the body has a similarity when you see a growth look not as part of the body the doctors remove it are we together now if you are of christ then you must carry his dna scattered in here inside and outside there are people listen who are yet to give their lives to christ you have never made a decision or perhaps there are people you have been coming out for altar call everywhere you go but you don't understand fully what you are doing or there are people who have given their lives to christ but for some reason honestly sincerely before god the cares of this life the pressures of this life have pushed you to a point where you know that you need to come back to your first love these three categories of people please very quickly we have two minutes to receive you wherever you are inside and outside the lord is speaking to you leave your seat and come right to the front god bless you god bless you appreciate them as they come i believe there are people the lord is speaking to don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person wherever you are make sure you don't sit back if god is talking to you there are people outside god bless you keep coming please don't sit back i believe there are more people god is speaking to them he's saying you need to come to the cross don't play games with your destiny no one will force you but then you are opening up yourself to a life of victory a life of grace two minutes please make your way to the front if there are people coming from outside make way for them hallelujah quickly quickly we have one more minute are there more people coming god bless you god bless you quickly if you're coming please hurry up let's stretch our hands towards them and pray for them if there's anyone joining them you, you join quickly as we pray look at me all of you in front please look at me i'm going to lead you into this prayer god bless you my brother look at me please gentlemen can you look at me just in one minute i want to pray for you my darling lady wants to join come and join my dear don't feel bad thank you for making this decision this is a decision unto the lord god bless you sir thank you so much sir thank you so much hallelujah lift your right hand and say after me from the depth of your heart dear lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe you died for me you shed your blood for my sin i ask you to come into my heart be my lord be my savior from today the power of sin 
is broken over my life I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus I receive the power to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father I stretch my hands over your people I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this decision will mark a new season in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ every weight every weight of the flesh and everything that destroys your passion for God we arrest right now in the name of Jesus let this begin a journey that will never end in the name of Jesus thank you so much for this great decision I'd like you to please rise and follow the gentleman waving his hands to welcome you more warmly on our behalf then the details bless you hallelujah hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching